Barry Trotz said that the prices were too damn high at the trade deadline, except they weren't not necessarily, at least for Anthony Bavillier, who is now a Nashville Predator. Now, we're going to talk about that in a second, but first got to tell you about Sleep Breakthrough, something that will give you a noticeable improvement in your ability to fall asleep quickly. I, I'm one of those people that watches their, the clock all the time, so I'm like, okay, I have to get up at this time. Let's say it's like 6.45 for my daughter, and I'm looking at my watch. I'm okay, I got, uh, I got three hours to go. Okay, I got two hours to go. Okay, if I can just fall asleep. And oftentimes for me, I wake up like in the middle of the night. Sleep Breakthrough helps you fall asleep and stay asleep and get there quickly. And if you don't sleep well, well, it can make you fatigued and irritable and unable, unable to focus throughout the day. It's going to help you with this. And the great thing about Sleep Breakthrough is it's a natural formula. It gets you into that deep REM sleep that you need to get out there and tweet about how much you loved the Anthony Bavillier trade. You know what I'm saying? So sleep breakthrough, all natural formula. It's something that the body doesn't get addicted to. It prevents dependency, but it also helps you get fresh in the morning. You don't get that kind of sleep hangover feeling that some products give you. So if you're struggling with your sleep like I did, I highly recommend giving sleep breakthrough a try. It's truly a game changer. Visit biooptimizers.com slash dangle and use the promo code dangle during checkout to save 10%. Now let's talk about Anthony Bavillier, who's had a really interesting year this year. A couple of trades already. And this latest one to Nashville is an interesting one because Anthony Bavillier is an interesting piece for the Nashville, Nashville Predators. If you remember, he split last season between the New York Islanders and Vancouver Canucks. And it was really strange when the Canucks picked him up because it was like, they're not going anywhere and they're not really doing anything, but we're going we're gonna to get Anthony Bavillier. Okay, fine. Good. The Canucks dealt him 22 games into this season to the Chicago Blackhawks. The Chicago Blackhawks then sent him to the Nashville Predators for a fifth round pick. Now, Bavillier's production is a little bit down this year. That's not just a product of playing on the Chicago Blackhawks, who aren't great. Um, it's also because he had a wrist injury. He's been back for about a month, but he hasn't scored a lot. Uh, this is a guy that's got four goals this entire season. And even on a team like the Blackhawks, where a veteran player who's got some speed and got some skill like Bavilio does. You got to remember this guy was a late first round pick back in the day. Um, he was still only getting about 14 minutes a night. So it doesn't, doesn't really feel like a fit. Why does he fit the Nashville Predators? Well, the Nashville Predators are interesting because they are like the ultimate depth team. If, if you look at the Nashville Predators, the scoring is completely spread out. Let's go through the list here. Okay. You got Philip Forsberg, who's outrageously good, 64 points in 63 games. Yossi, outrageously good, 61 points in 63 games. And then you got guys like O'Reilly, Nyquist, Novak, Tommy Novak, who just signed that extension. The fall off in points, though, was really interesting. Ryan O'Reilly, 54 points, Nyquist with 53. And then fifth on team scoring is Tommy Novak and then Colton Sissons with 34 and 32, respectively. And it just goes down from there. Now, I'm not expecting Anthony Bavilia to get crazy points by coming to the Nashville Predators, but what he does give them are options. They're probably going to the playoffs this year unless something absolutely catastrophic happens and you get injuries and you need guys like Bavillier to play up and down your lineup. Now, as I said, he's done some center. He's done some left wing. He gives you that flexibility. And this is a guy that at his height, you know, right before the pandemic, which feels like eons ago now, he was a 40, 35, 40 point guy. Those guys become extremely valuable in the playoffs when you're talking about your top guys having wrist injuries or back injuries or whatever else comes up. Now, like I said, Bavillier has had a wrist injury, and it seems to have affected his play. They're really hard to shake off midseason. Um, but, you know, this is hockey. Everybody's playing with something, and he's going to have to figure it out. I'm, I'm curious about how often he draws into the lineup over the guys that are already there. The thing about Nashville... And, you know, it could be because they didn't go see you too, uh, is they play really well as a team as is. And when general managers uh, or presidents, in this case with um, Barry Trotz, make deals, they have to take into account why, what's working with their team and why. And the interesting thing about the Nashville Predators is going into the season, not many people would have really pegged them as like a guaranteed, absolutely going to the playoffs team. But what they do is they play a great team game, very Barry Trotz hockey. Just double down on that defense, prevent shots, don't score a lot. I mean, it's the Nashville Predators of old under Barry Trotz all over again. And I think the New York Islanders more recently where Barry Trotz was coaching are another great example of what that can be. Um, Bavillier can fit into that because he's useful. 
He's going to find roles on this roster, and I don't think it's really set in stone what he's going to do right away, uh, but he certainly helps that ability to kind of switch things around. And as I said, you don't want to mess too much with team chemistry, and maybe Nashville feels like we got a good thing going. Let's add a little bit of depth, and we'll see where this goes. Somebody inevitably is going down in the playoffs with an injury, and Bavillier helps that. So uh, the interesting thing, I think, for the Chicago Blackhawks is, you know, last year they were such players at the deadline. This year, they're not really expected to do all that much. There isn't a lot to sell. And the guys that you would expect them to sell, like, you know, a Peter Morazic, have actually signed on to stay on longer because, A, it's a guaranteed job at really good money. And, B, um, somebody's got to play for them. They can't just keep selling. Connor Bedard has got to play with somebody next year and this year too. So for the Chicago Blackhawks, I'm wondering what their strategy is going into tomorrow's deadline if they have one at all. I think if you're a team like, you know, a capstrack team, like most of the teams who are at the tops of their divisions, you call the Chicago Blackhawks and go, hey, can I throw in some picks and you take some salary and we double retain on somebody? I think that's the factor they're going to play. As for the Nashville Predators, lightning in a bottle right now. They didn't go see you 2 and now they're just absolutely crushing it. Amazing, right? So if you're the Nashville Predators, why change too much? I don't see them doing a whole lot more than this, but watch, they'll go make some crazy move and I'll have to eat my words. I think what they have is pretty good. Unless there's some sort of otherworldly elite talent available, that, you know, on the level of like Philip Forsberg and Roman Yossi, I think that they kind of keep it the same. And that might be a good thing. I don't think people are taking them seriously uh, as, as seriously as perhaps they should, especially with teams like Edmonton and Vegas and Colorado and Dallas to go for. They could surprise. This could be a second or a third round team. You just don't know. It's the playoffs. So interesting pickup for the Nashville Predators, Anthony Bavillier. Hopefully he finds a little bit more life and a little bit more ice time in Nashville. We'll see how it goes.